Somebody shout glory. Shout glory. Are you ready this morning? Wow, what a word. Can you please celebrate God's servant, Evangelist Daniel? I didn't come in from the beginning, but I was richly blessed. The word of the Lord was strong and fresh, impactful, transforming. Thank you for being a blessing. God bless you, sir. Again, can we celebrate daddy? Evangelist I Kibono for raising the platform for Jesus. Come on! Glory! Hallelujah. I want to salute every minister of, of the gospel in the house this morning. Again, it's my privilege to be here. And I believe the Lord will take us to where he has planned to bring every one of us to by reason of this conference. You know, every sound teaching of the word of the Lord is Christocentric. The moment Jesus ceases to be the center and the circumference, everything is lost. And every Christocentric message has three major compartments. There is the what that expounds the emphasis of God. There is the how that shows you the dynamics of realizing that which is painted. And there is the why that gives you the reason and the meaning for that emphasis from an eternal perspective. And so as we are considering the subject of the church, it's important for us to understand the what the how and the why. So this morning again, I would like to bring us perspective from the standpoint of the what of the church. As I take the afternoon session, I will talk about the how, which reveals to us the dynamics. And then in the evening, I'll talk about the why. And then we'll pray for the sick. Is that okay? Now sit down in God's presence. Thank you so much. God bless you. You may sit down. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
privilege of knowing you. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your oracle to us and bringing us to that place where we can interact with your spirit. We receive all that you have to offer and we receive even yourself in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Can you still receive some more this morning? Are you sure you are not yet saturated? You can still receive some more. Yes, because your heart, the vastness of your heart can contain eternity. So you should never have enough. So long as you're on earth, never be satisfied. Always receive more and more and more. Hallelujah. So let's begin from Matthew chapter 16. from verse 18 or better still from verse 16 you know there's been a burden in the heart of God you know if not for the fall the greatest preoccupation of man would have been an adventure of knowing God Man was designed to know God, to contain God, and to express God. It is part of the infrastructure and the architecture that was powered by the intelligence of the divine when he began the project of creation. That mortals, we have the privilege of hosting divinity, of knowing that which is hosted, and of expressing him. The fall is the reason why man began to pursue other things. And every time God begins to re-engineer a man, he causes that man to approach him, to look upon him, and to make his ways perfect. Jesus summarizing it in Matthew 6, 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and he said, all other things shall be added. Every other thing in the visible realm was supposed to be an addition. Because the design was for man to desire God, to seek God, to know God. And that is why Jesus will summarize life as the knowledge of God. In John 17 verse 3, he said, this is life eternal. I don't know in the biological sense. Life may be breath. In the biological sense, life may be the reproductive aspect of existence. That you have blood and that you are walking. But he said from the eternal context, from the realms of reality, life is deeper than breath. It is the knowledge of God. So when a man begins to know God, he begins to tap into frequencies that are beyond the earthly realm. So much so that even if he were to take off this visible casing, he will still live. That's why we don't die. We translate into a higher reality. Because life is not breath. Life is intercourse with God. Life is the experience of God. So when man detaches from this body, he journeys even into a deeper experience with that deity called God. So God has had this body in his heart to tabernacle with men. In fact, at the end of all things, in the book of Revelation, the Bible said, the spirit and the bride says come it is always about intimacy with the divine it said the lord will dwell with his people the tabernacle of god will be with men and he said in those days there will no longer be sun he said the son of god will become the light of that city because the 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 illumination that man will require will be the brightness that comes from the Christos. 
So it had always been in the mind of God to dwell with man. And so when we consider the subject of the church, we are trying to come into depth and understanding of what this intrinsic relationship between man and God is about. We are not coming to talk about a building, an institution, or an organization. We are coming to talk about a mystical organism that exists in time, but its reality is beyond time. We are talking about a mystical reality that can be seen, but its root is in the spirit. We are talking about a mystical reality whose identity cannot in any way be defined from the standpoint of human cognition. His identity and essence can only be defined to the degree that the spirit he carries is manifested. This is the subject we've come to consider. And then we, we, we must follow it block by block to understand, first of all, its foundation and its essence before we understand its dynamics and then how to make the most of it. So this morning, I want to begin from where the master himself began. In Matthew chapter 16, from verse 15, Jesus took the disciples with him. He separated them from everybody and he began to ask them a question. Who do men say, I, the son of man, I am? Jesus wants to talk about the church and then he was not talking about institutions. He was not talking about human philosophies and ideologies. Now remember, the people he is talking to were raised in the synagogue. They understood the laws of Moses. They understood the ways of the Torah. They had gone through religious exercises. They know the ways of worship. They know the ways of sacrifice. Jesus wants to talk about what they taught they knew all their lives. In, in fact, most of the oracles of God was recited to them in the Feast of Tabernacles. For seven days, they just read the ways of God to them. Jesus wants to talk to these people about what they thought they knew. And then he didn't go to begin to tell them about the structure of the Sanhedrin. He didn't go to tell them about the situation of the altar. He didn't go to tell them about the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. He didn't go to tell them about all the organizational aspect of the reality culture. He said, who do men say, I, the son of man, I am. How do you begin to talk about the church and then you are trying to understand the person? Why won't you talk about the institutional aspect of it? Why won't you talk about the religious aspect of it? Why won't you talk about the organizational aspect of it? I thought church was an institution. I thought church was an organization where people come together and they have sets of religious exercises. Why do you want to talk about your own church and you violate all of the sequences and plethora of activities that have been pedestered over the years, all the activities that resonated through human civilization, all the activity that they held in high estate. Why do you violate all of different activity? And you want to talk about the church and you begin with you. So when the disciples looked at him, they didn't understand what he meant. And they said, well, some say you are Isaiah. If it's your identity you are looking for. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are John the Baptist, you return from the dead. That's why you have power. Others say you are one of the prophets. Now that we have defined you, what is the point? And Jesus told them, who do you say I am? What Jesus, the point Jesus made there was that all of the religious activity that have lasted for 1,500 years is not the church. What Jesus meant was that all of the structure and organizational intelligence that they have mastered and held at high esteem is not the church. So since what they know and do is not short, who do you say I, the son of man, I am? And for the first time, an answer did not come from a theological seminary. For the first time, and now meanwhile, I'm not against, theology. don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, they are pastors here, so I know they understand what I mean. But for the benefit of many other people, so you don't say, eh, eh, we said it, all this theology, that's not what I'm saying. Because as we evolve, 
we will need systems that help us organize what we do are we together so i'm not i went to bible school so i'm not talking against that all right now for the first time none of the answers came from the realm of human intelligence none of the answers came from foundations of philosophy and psychology and sociology for the first time a man tapped into the frequency of abba and he spoke from the heart of the father and he said you are the christ the son of the living god immediately he got jesus's attention now you are not reading from a textbook now you are reading the heartbeat of god and he said thou art peter immediately he gave him a place in what is building the reason is because the church in itself is a strategy of downloading dimensions of heaven into the earth there is no way you can import heaven into earth without a strategy so the strategy was captured by peter everything that is in the heart of the father the ability to crystallize it on the on the plane of the earth is the strategy called the church and he said thou art peter upon this revelation I will build my church. So what happened to the synagogue? What happened to the reciting of the Urim and the Tumim? What happened to all the religious exercises? Upon the revelation of the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, I will build my church and the gate of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, there are two things we need to understand. The first pillar that Peter mentioned was that you are the Christ. The second pillar that Peter mentioned was that you are the son of the living God. And I began to explain who the son was. So until the revelation of the son is captured, there can be no church. It doesn't matter our number. We can be one million. One principality can rule in the territory and we will not have power over that principality because the ranking and the stature of the church is not numerical when you do spirit business in the realm of the spirit number is not your advantage it is the depth from whence you operate that determines the efficacy of your operation so if we don't come to the revelation of the son we don't have a foundation for the church to be built and i began to tell us yesterday that there are five things that makes for the son because the first time god wanted to create his son those five pillars were the pillars that god himself erected the first pillar god erected was in genesis 1 28 26 he said let us make man remember the bible said adam was the son of god so the first son of god that was created there were infrastructures that that son of god carried that would have made him become the first expression of the church because the first expression of the church was not in the wilderness it was supposed to be eden and the pillars of sonship that were embodied in that man were first that he had the image of god and the likeness of god he said let us make man in our own image and i want to digress a little by letting you know that affiliations of whatsoever apart from God can make you it doesn't matter who you are connected to if you are not connected vitally to God you can't be made because in the sequences of divine operation only God makes men every other person that works to assist you is motivated mandated and inspired by God so every human connection that doesn't have God as the central essence cannot make you because only God says let us make man so the first son that was made carried the image of god he carried the likeness of god and the sec the third thing about him is that that man was kept in the presence of god jesus the bible said in genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 he said god planted a garden in the east side of eden and he put the man there so that son of god had one habitat the habitat of that man was the presence of god our house is not the physical building that covers us our house is the canopy of the presence of god that we carry because when demons want to enter your house they don't need to use the door 
So if all you have is a shelter, a physical shelter, you are in danger. You are an endangered species. The moment your protection becomes the wall and the iron door of your heart, there must be the canopy of the presence of God. Because the way the first man was built, he was built to live in the presence. And the 14, he said, in Genesis 1, 28, let them have dominion. So the man had authority. The final thing which the man never attained was for him to have eaten of the tree of life. Genesis 2 verse 9, God planted the tree of life in the midst of the garden. The man was supposed to have eaten it. If that man had eaten it, he would have become the first expression of the church. But the man never ate it. So when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, the first thing Peter was saying is that you are the carrier of the image of God. You are the carrier of the likeness of God. You are the carrier of the presence of God. You are the carrier of the authority of God. And you are the carrier of the life of God. So it was not just a nomenclature. Calling him the son of God was not a nomenclature. It was not a title. It was a definition of essence. Essentially, this is who you are. So the first foundation of the church was the son of God. Those were the things Jesus was referring to. He wasn't referring to the fact that uh, Peter got it right when all the prophets failed. He was talking about the fact that what he will build we have his image, we have his likeness, we carry his presence, we exhibit his authority, and we have his life. If that is possible, then the church can appear. That's what Jesus said. And the second thing he said, he said, you are the Christ. Now, when you look at the word Christ, in the Old Testament, that word was used 39 times. And in, 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 the Hebrew word is Mashiach. You must have heard about Yeshua, HaMashiach. And the word Mashiach means the Messiah that is to come to save the world. But you see, in that Old Testament, where that word was used 39 times, 37 times it was not translated as Messiah. 37 times it was translated as the anointed one and his anointing. That's why in the New Testament, he was translated in Greek as the Christos. Because the Christos did not bother about the Messiah. The Christos bothers more about the anointed one and his anointing. Now, what is the significance of the anointed one and his anointing? There are two things that we must understand there. The first is that in the Old Testament where that word came from, only three categories of people were anointed. The king, the priest, and the prophet. The king is anointed to rule. The priest is anointed so that he can approach God and talk to God. The prophet is anointed so that he can hear God and talk to a people. If you study the book of Exodus chapter 30 verse 30, you are going to see scriptures where these things are talked about. In Exodus 30 verse 30, the Bible says that Moses should anoint Aaron and his sons into the priest's office. In 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 16, the Bible said, Elijah, God told him to anoint Jehu as king and Elisha as prophet. So only kings, prophets, and priests were anointed. So when Peter called Jesus the Christ, what Peter said was that you are king, you are prophet, and you are priest. This is why the church has authority over darkness. This is why the church becomes the legal base on earth that can approach God. And this is why the church becomes the channel through which God can reach the world. As king, the church can bring government to the face of the earth. As priest, the church can bring the world to God. And as, as, as prophet, the church can bring God to the world. If the church cannot exercise government on the face of the earth, it is not church. If the church cannot reveal God to the world, it is not church. And if the church cannot reconcile the world back to God, it is not church. So when he called him the Christ, what it meant was that he called him the government. He called him 
the connection between the world and heaven and they called him the connection between god and man on the premise of this jesus said it was enough to build my church if there is an institution on earth that carries my image and my likeness my life my authority and my presence and then this organism does not only have this factor this organism can rule in the earth this organism can connect earth to heaven and this organism can connect heaven to earth then there is nothing to wait for upon this revelation i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so i told us yesterday the church is not a building the church is not an organization the church is not an institution the church is a person or a people that carries the image of god the likeness of god the presence of god the authority of god and the life of god and beyond that the church is a people that can bring the world to god and can bring god to the world and exercise the rulership of god upon the face of the earth when this is understood then we know what the church is Elohim Madonna Elohim Madonna Elohim Madonna Elohim Madonna people begin to spread there may be a need to bring organization and administration but they are not an administration they are the image of the Christ the son of the living God when the people begins to expand they may become systemic for coordination but it is not about coordination they are the image of the invisible God the Christ the son of the living God this is why we are called the body of Christ. We are not the body of Christ just for nomenclature sake. We are the body of Christ because when you see Jesus and see us, we are the same. That's why I told you the church in the north should not be different from the church in the east. If the church in the north is different from the church in the east, it means the church in the north have borrowed the culture of the northerners and the church of the east have borrowed the culture of the easterners because in the spirit we are one with christ so in a, in colossians 2 9 colossians 1 19 it said he pleased the father that the fullness of the godhead should dwell in him bodily and in colossians 1 19 he called this one that the fullness of the godhead dwell the head of the church so the church becomes the body co-inheriting with the head. So when people gather and we can't see the image of God, it means the church must return. When people gather and we can't touch the presence of God, it means the church must return. If people gather and we can't see the authority of God, then the church must return. If the people gather and we can't sense and interact with the life of God the church must return do you see why the church doesn't end after a service when you go home your family becomes the church because you carry the life the presence the nature the authority into your family do you see why the church doesn't end after Sunday service when you enter your office your office becomes the church I see people they tell you no, no, no. I don't mingle my business with a religious thing. It's because you don't know the church. Because the church is not a religious organization. The church is a legalistic, divine, orchestrated strategy from heaven to bring God to earth. So when you enter your business, your business becomes a church. Your, ma your shop is not a shop. Your shop is actually a church. The reason 
demons come to torment people's businesses is because they leave church on Sunday morning. And if you leave church, the gate of hell will prevail. The only institution on earth that the gate of hell cannot prevail against is the church. So if the church is not your family, then your family is in trouble. If the church is not your business, then your business is in trouble. If the church is not your office, then your office is in trouble. Because the church is not the institution, it's the people of God. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth. Oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, God, you are by the heart of the deep. Oh, fountains of the deep, cry out, God, you are by the heart of church returns sir we will not lobby to see the governor because the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder the reason you see seven bishops going to wait for the governor is because they don't know who the church is we should coach him how to advance kingdom we are his coach and a day will come when the governor will be a pastor because the government has to become an extension of the church when the church is born you don't make people deacons because they are millionaires. You make people deacons because in them is the spirit of God. Select from among you seven men of honest report, full of faith and the spirit. Deacons are not millionaires. But they are men full of faith and the spirit. A man full of faith can be a millionaire. So the idea is not whether he's a millionaire or not. The idea is, is he full of God? When the church returns, pastors will not lobby to pastor in the city center. When they say, go to the village, you say, I'm the light of the world. A city set upon the heat that cannot be here. So when I come to darkness, it's an opportunity to shine. The reason pastors lobby to minister in the city center is because the church has not come. When the church returns, he said the light shines in the darkness the darkness comprehended it not so when they take you to a dark place it's an opportunity to shine how many souls will you win here 90 percent of those in the city center are already born again so when they send you to the bush ah oh, i'm about to increase my stars because they that win it so they are wise he said they shall shine like the brightness of the firmament so you know they may think they want to wicked you. They may think they want to frustrate you. They are giving you opportunity to gain rank in Zion. In Zion. The evangelism I didn't have opportunity to do. Now it's time to do the evangelism. Oh! I was sensing the healing anointing. But when I come to church in the city, there are not too many sick people. Now that I'm going to the village, I will meet the blind. I will meet the deaf. I will meet the lame. So it's an opportunity for me to grow the life of God on my inside. God is the church. We chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah! Holy Ghost, ah, 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 ah
and ages past God was looking for where to do air in Isaiah 66 verse 1 he said the heaven is my throne the earth is my footstool but where is the dwelling place that you have made for me where is the place of my rest can I tell you that search I've ended because in the church God has a dwelling place the church is the embassy of God on the face of the earth when you want to find God's address don't look at heaven look at the church that's why in Ephesians 3 10 it said the principalities and powers shall look at the church to learn the wisdom of God because God is not in heaven God is in the church we chant in the Holy Ghost ah. surprise you the power on earth is more than the power in heaven Jesus said in Matthew 28 from verse 18 he said all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me take go in that power the greatest power in the universe is not in heaven is in the church because all power in heaven and on earth was taken from heaven taken from earth and remember jesus went to hades they said having spoiled principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in victory so even the power in hades was seized where did he keep that power where did he keep it as the father have sent me so send i you go in this power he said to all that be thee I can't say some things you will call it heresy you know too much theology if i explain some mysteries you will call it heresy the greatest power in all the universes of god is in the church why because god lives in the church where is american embassy in nigeria it's in abuja and lagos where is God's embassy? It's in the church. So when you want to find God, don't go to heaven. The 20 and 4 elders, they have been looking for millions of years. They've not seen him. Because today, one dimension appears. They bow, they rise, they see another dimension. Ah, this is the God we saw now. They bow again. They rise up, they think they've seen him. Another dimension. So the Bible said day and night, forever and ever, they keep on. They keep on but in the church the fullness of the godhead dwells bodily we don't see dimension we see the totality of the godhead we chant in the holy ghost said in mark 11 from verse 22 he said if you have faith that means if you know and believe and your belief is as small as a mustard seed he said you will say to this mountain do you know why in dealing with things god no longer expects us to talk to him because the power to deal with things is now in the church that's why he said you will say to this mountain be thou removed. He didn't say tell God about the mountain. If you tell God, he won't do anything. Why? Because the power of God is in the church. So instead of telling God, tell the mountain. Because the power is resident in you. And the church has become God's embassy. But we don't know. That's why a Christian is running to a herbalist. Sir, in case I want to hear God, and I'm troubled and I can't hear God I won't go to heaven 
I will look for another person that carries God. And in the spirit, the DNA of that person will be a prophet. And suddenly, I call Apostle Justin Suleiman. Sir, I'm trying to hear God. I can't hear him. And then he begins to narrate to me. This is what God told you. This is why he said it. This is why. Because the mysteries in the church. I'm looking for healing. I tried my faith. It doesn't work. While I'm growing, I meet Reverend Chris Oyakilome. And I said, sir, I have a problem. That is cancer. What do I do about it? And he walks to me in a white suit. And he said, in the name of Jesus, cancer, die. And cancer dies. Cancer dies. I'm struggling in business. I try, it doesn't work. And all of a sudden, I meet Bishop David Oedeko. And Bishop David Oedeko wakes up in the morning. I said, my son, what is the problem? I said, things are not working. He said, command your heavens to open. Do men command heavens to open? Do men command heavens to open? Yes, because the shout of the king is among his people. And we are the word of the Lord is there is power who can say unto him what do I start can I tell you something I was in ministry for 13 years doors were not open and suddenly I walked to Apostle Osa, and then he told me, such as I have, I give you. And all of a sudden, from Lagos to Abuja, from Kanu to Meduguri, from Calabar to Yola, everybody is inviting me. What happened? There are men that break doors. They don't open doors, they break it. So anytime they speak, doors open. Because all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me and i hand that power to you can i tell you this is why we don't weep anymore we don't cry we don't cry because the solution is now in the church the church is christ's embassy on earth please sit down i have five more minutes a living organism it's not only God's embassy on earth it's a living organism and what powers the church is not bios the animal life no it's not suche the soulish life no what powers the church is God the zoe of God so the life listen the Bible said in the beginning God created no in the beginning was the world the world was with God and the word was God. He said the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of man. So in Jesus was life. But at first, the life was with the father. Because in John 5, 26, he said, as the father have life in himself. So as he given to the son to have life in himself. Now when the son was going, he said, I am going to my father, your father. I'm going to my father, your father. What does that mean? The life that was in the father that was given to the son have now been handed over to the church. This is why when we go for soul winning, we don't tell the people to ask God. We give them the life of God because we have become a living organism. We have the life of God. Jesus said, when you see the sick 
don't pray touch them touch them he said lay hands on the sick they will recover why because you have become an effulgence of the life of god when the church knows this you can be traveling in a bus and then you sit with somebody that is cursed because you touch that person the cause we break In First John chapter 5, verse 11, it said, This is the record. This is the record that Jesus is the Son of God. And he said, The life is in the Son. And he said, Whoever has the Son has that life. Whoever has the Son. So the church is not an institution, it's a living organism. And what powers the church is the life of God. So we can transmit the life of God as we. As I'm talking, how do you think you are standing? Were you this actual before? I was speaking life. And as life was entering you, suddenly, even those who were weak, they discover that they have been energized. The word is called endunamo. As we talk, we talk life. That's why I told you, spirits don't speak English. Spirits speak spirit and life. And because we receive the spirit of God, we now talk spirit and life. Somebody will live here, he will think he's just excited. After a while, you will discover that asthma has gone. After a while, you'll discover that the waist pain for five years has gone. After a while, you will discover that the kidney infection has gone. Why? Because you were not hearing English, you were hearing spirit and life. The church is a living organism. Elohim Adonah Elohim Adonah Elohim Adonah Elohim Adonah So the church is what? Is the embassy of God on earth. Number two, the church is what? The organism that lives by the life of God. If you want to go to the US now, what do you do? You go to American embassy. Why do you think if people want to go to heaven, they come to church? Because we are God's embassy on earth. If we don't give them the ticket, they will go nowhere. They will die and go to hell. The only way to heaven is in Christ. But the church is the dispenser of Christ. That's why we are the embassy of God on earth. And when we dispense Christ, we don't just only give a person, we give that life to the people. And number three, the, the church is God's agency on the face of the earth. Legal agency. There is nothing God can do on the earth without the church. Everything God wants to do, it is the church he depends on to bring it to pass. Somebody said, does the sovereign God depend on men? We are not talking men. We are talking the body of Christ. We are part of him. Are we together? We are a part of him. Jesus rose from the dead, ascended to heaven. And Jesus wanted souls to be one. And Jesus will return from heaven and come and meet Peter. Peter have gone fishing. And Jesus will tell Peter, do you love me? Go and keep my sheep. Why didn't Jesus command from heaven? All men that are preordained to salvation, you are saved. It will not work. Because they design, not because God is not sovereign, because that's how he designed the system. That the church will be his legal agency on the face of the earth, administering the purposes of God. So every purpose in the heart of God, we are the ones that will determine it. Do you know why things go wrong on earth? If you think God doesn't depend on the church, then God will be blamed for the evil of the earth. The reason God cannot be blamed is because the degree of light that shines is dependent on the degree of the administration that the church carries out for God. We are God's agencies. I'm out of time. Yeshua Amatia Lion of Judah
tell you something from today when you go out don't go out intimidated square your shoulder you are an ambassador you are not of earth you came from heaven people think people think confidence and charisma is pride it's a lie pride is a spirit a man can be lukewarm and behave like a bird yet he's very proud he said giving thanks to the father who has made us kings and priests he washed us and he made us kings and priests and the last time i checked no king dressed shabbily so when you see a christian carelessly dressed living without recourse to his identity is christ it's because he doesn't know he's a church next time they tell you you will die don't pray laugh we don't die we know too much to die can i tell you i am an apostle i know the messages of an apostle is not from bible study it is from encounters and dealings so all my life i've gone through warfare i am promoted when i pass in the warfare somebody else can be promoted because he has favor with his boss not an apostle apostles are promoted by trials and persecution and most times we will stand on in front of the grave and then when the grave opens our mouth we walk past it we walk even the grave is amazed how did we walk past it because the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not do you know how many people have cursed me do you know how many people have wished me death if i die now they will preach me on many altars i'm telling you that's the wickedness of of people but they will never see their wish come to pass you know why because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world i am part of the body of christ i live by the life of god we don't die when we finish our assignment on earth we translate tell yourself cancer can't kill me the life in me is stronger than cancer tell yourself causes can't kill me the authority in me is greater than any cause tell yourself I can't be poor I belong to an, an organism that is superior to poverty one day I stood up I said devil throw your best shot and I told God if you can't pro protect me I'm willing to die I believe too much to die that's why I said the hope of your enemy shall not be realized we waste prayer on too many things when you are sick command the sickness in the name of Jesus get up and then go and love God in prayer go and love God even if a herbalist kills 12 virgin and say you will die go and laugh it's not given to him the jealousy of God is invested on your life do you know how many million souls my life alone is blessing and then on the sentiment of a man they will now tell you you will die it can't happen not by power not by might but by the spirit of the living god the church must return and when we find ourselves 
we begin to walk by the mechanism of love and unity love and unity that's when the pastor will respect the usher you know why even the usher to carry god so the pastor will not match the usher as if it's nothing no the usher is just in a department the usher to carry god that's why a pastor cannot be jealous of another pastor because it is the same god working in all of us when you are jealous of that pastor it is god you are fighting not the man the man is only a container of the spirit of elohim we don't know the church that's why things seem to be going on i had four sisters none of them was married the list was 32 years old we did vigils upon vigils pray religious prayer lord show mercy lord help us and one day the holy ghost told me i have already shown mercy i have already shown love he said my mercy my love is a man called christ and when i gave you christ i gave you all if i have anything better than christ i would have given you but i don't have anything better i gave you my best and my all and i stood up i looked at my sister i said today i send all of you to your husband's house there was no vigil there was no prayer i entered my reality i discovered i had authority in christ somebody will go back home see there is too much human philosophy some of the messages you hear is to kill your confidence and then to deify men somebody says he's demonized or he's cursed and then they make him feel is 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 because of what his grandfather did and they have to do this and do this and then you meet the man of god the same name of jesus you refuse to use is the same name of jesus the man we use the same blood of jesus you refuse to use is the same blood the man we use the same cross you refuse to acknowledge is the same cross the man will refuse and the same resurrection that you refuse to acknowledge is the same resurrection so if you know and believe you will sit in your room and say there is no enchantment against jacob neither is there divination against israel there's no enchantment against jacob there's no divination against israel mantles have been given to the church once again mandates have been given to the church once again for the kings to be born for the ancients to arise for the princes to arise for the lions to arise ali ali o ali o ali ali o Turn to the devil and tell him I am I'm, I'm too big to die. God, who is greater than the greatest, bigger than the biggest, dwells here. I can't die. Many people may dream, they may have vision. They are lying visions. There is no vision stronger than the word of God. It is the oracle of God. Peter said, we were on the mountain of transfiguration. We saw him transfigured. We have seen the greatest vision. He said, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. It doesn't matter. They may dream and see you in a coffin. They may dream and say you have accident. Even myself, Sometimes I want to go for a meeting and I see a vision and the car crash. I say, get out, devil. Get out. You can't stop me. He said, as the wind blow it, thou listest not for whence it cometh or where it goeth. So are they that are born by the Spirit of God. Do we have accident? Mantles have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given. Church, 
Ali Ali O. Ali Ali O. The Lord wants to impart the spirit of faith. Just be calm and lift your hands. Many of you have lived in fear because fear brings torment. You have not heard the gospel. Your business will not fail. You are the prophet over that business. Your children will not die. Your marriage will not fail. Your health will not fail. If only you know who you are and you begin to prophesy. Remember, pastor was sharing yesterday. He said, and the earth was in darkness. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. God never came and said, hey, darkness, darkness. If not because Moses wrote it, you won't even know there was darkness. All God said was, light be. Light be. It is not denial of fact, but it's refusal of fact to dominate you. No matter how long it has lasted, begin to prophesy. You will be amazed. The mountains can vanish. He said, when Israel left Egypt, Judah was a sanctuary. He said, the sea saw him and fled. Jordan went backward and the mountains skipped like rams. Ebenezer. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ebenezer, my heart has come. The Lord is about to release the spirit of faith. Ebenezer, of God is descending now. There's an impartation of the spirit of faith. here your church is not growing it's not a problem begin to decree lift your hands toward heaven there are 12 people here that will receive the impartation of the spirit of faith that is what we call the word of faith that's what we call the gift of faith and that's what we call the spirit of faith the word of faith comes by the gospel the gift of faith comes by the Holy Ghost and then the spirit of faith is an operation of the Holy Ghost within. Father! Of fear, but of boldness, 
of law and of a sound man. From the left to the right, from the front to the back, first gallery, second gallery, right now, Holy Spirit, everyone implicated, everyone implicated, there is an impartation of the spirit of faith. Holy Ghost, touch. I want to touch this once. Holy Ghost, touch. Touch. I release that impartation of the spirit of faith. It's coming violently on some of you. Bring them out quickly. Quickly. Something is about to change. Twelve. Just the keyboard. Just the keyboard. Twelve is the number of government. Touch. Touch. upon you. Touch! Come on, faster! Such as I have, Holy Ghost, let it be. 